Commonwealth governors of the South-South Zone have decided to establish a regional security network. Five of the six governors which make up the states in the zone, Bielsa, Kwaibom, Delta, Edo and Rivers, met in Port Harcourt. The governor of Cross River State did not attend the meeting. He is the only all progressive Congress governor in the zone. The other five belong to the People's Democratic Party, PDP. The meeting focused on regional security, the Petroleum Industry Act, PIA, as well as the value added tax. The South South governors called on President Mohamed Buhari and the federal government to swiftly constitute the board of the Niger Delta Development Commission and DDC. At an extensive deliberation, the council resolved, one, bearing in mind that most of the great states have established their state security organs, we approved the regional security architecture which will be launched very soon. Two, unequivocally supports the decision for states to collect value added tasks and resolve to join the suit before the Supreme Court. Three, Council urged the President and the National Assembly to take necessary measures to review some unfair aspects of the recently signed Petroleum Industry Bill now Act to ensure fairness and equity. It called that the amendment should include a clear definition of both communities and that, and that the trustees should be appointed by state governments. Four, Council Arts called upon the President and the Federal Government to uphold the law establishing the Niger Delta Development Commission by appropriately constituting this board. In addition, it expressed the hope that the federal government would make the forensic audit report public and deal justly and fairly with the report with a view to strengthening the capacity of NDDC to meet its obligations to the people of the region. Five, council regretted that the president and the federal government had generally failed to give present consideration to requests made by the region during the dialogue with a special federal delegation led by Professor Ibrahim Danbari, Chief of Staff to the President. Notable among the requests were the relocation of NNPC subsidiaries and IOC headquarters to the Niger Delta and the completion of a number of federal projects in the region, notably votes. At the end of deliberations, Council expressed its appreciation to the chairman and commended the host government for its warm hospitality and for the success of the meeting. Well, now joining us to look at these issues is the National Coordinator, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Emmanuel Ombiko. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Newsnight. Uh, thank you. Very much. Uh, so many issues to uh, look at, but let's begin uh, from the last report there where the South-South governors have come up with a regional uh, security network. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Is it an indictment on the inability or the failure of the central government to provide adequate security, not just in the South-South, but in every part of the country? And will this not further exacerbate the security situations in not just in the South-South? Re recall that when the Eastern Southeast governors came up with uh, well, they announced a security Bago. network that they were going to set up. Bago. It looked like, um, you know, security situation got worse in the southeast. What do you make of this? Well, I beg to differ. I do not think that the announcement of the formation of Ibubago by the southeast governors exacerbated the situation. What had actually escalated the security situation is the lack of honesty and sincerity on the part of the southeast governors to actually put in motion, set in motion, the, formu the formulation and the formation of a Bubago in practical terms. The whole of Southeast, apart from a Boeing state that on paper claims to have um, set up a Bubago, virtually no state in South Southeast has a functional Bubago. I come from Imo State and I just, I just uh, got back from a worry and I can tell you that there's nothing like a Bubago and in fact, the Imo State governor is one of those governors in the South East that has actually not been very consistent in 
adhering to the general agreement of the Southeast governors. Then to come to the question you asked about the South-South governors, I think what they have done is, the, is something that is worth applauding. It's something that the federal government should commend them for. Because if you look at the constitution, mm -hmm. the exclusive list, the uh, legislative uh, list, security is, the, uh, is supposed to be almost like 90% the responsibility of the central government. But the central government has failed. Mm -hmm. Central government cannot even protect itself. Central government um, infrastructures all over the country are under attack. Nigerian citizens are under attack all over the country. The situation in the southeast is not as worst as what is happening in the northwest region of this country, where you and I know that. Mm -hmm. For instance, we, I was born in Kavanchan in Kaduna State, and in the last 10 years I've not gone to Kavanchan. Even when my alma mater had a meeting last year, I couldn't go because I was so scared of paying. Paying, uh, uh, it's not as if if you are kidnapped, you will not be freed. But the possibility of raising the kind of ransom that we demand is the is what puts the fear in a lot of us who yeah. who were born in the north, even though we come from other parts of the country, but we still have some of our family members up, the uh, up there in the north. We cannot go to the north, so it is something that is worth commending the South South Governor's initiative to set up that security outfit. I wish that the South South governors will not emulate the bad example of the South East governors who just went to the press to deceive their people that they're going to set up a bago and they went back home and just relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know, unlike the Southwest governors that actually promised to set up the Amotiku, I think, and mm -hmm. you can see the kind of the kind of struggle, the kind of fight that some officials of the federal government mounted against it, as if they are benefiting from the killings, from the attacks by all sorts of non-state actors, including the so-called headsmen. You understand? So I don't think anybody with rationality, anybody with a modicum of conscience, should uh, oppose any measure or action put in place by just anybody, including... Right. Mm. Uh, Imana, the yes. question oh, is yes. whether this is coming a little too late. Uh, we're going to get back... Uh, from the break and we'll raise some more issues mm -hmm. about the governors, their timing and what is happening in the Southeast. You're watching Newsnight. We'll be back in a bit with more Don't Go Away. All right, glad to have you back. You're still watching Newsnight. I will still have you, Manuel Omubiko, National Coordinator of Human Rights uh, Association of Nigeria. Glad to still have you here. Yeah, I was talking about, someone said to me, actually I was, I was driving back and someone said to me yesterday, we have happening in the Southeast now, uh, what we have happening there was exactly how Boko Haram started. You know, the question is the governors, do you think that they left this or gave it a tacit support and now they have on their hands what they seem not to be able to handle? They are called the security uh, chiefs of their state. Well, I also want to disagree with any analysis that draws a conclusion. What is happening in the South is compared to Boko Haram. Boko Haram is not a, the kind of thing that happened in the South is, is more of politics. Boko Haram is an ideological kind of fight, religious, deeply religious, and it's something that even involves some governors. Some of the governors of Bono State were indicted in the setting up of Boko Haram. If you read the report, mm -hmm. I was the committee, a member of the Presidential Committee on Restoration of Peace and Dialogue in the North, and I have the information regarding Boko Haram. So nobody should compare what is happening in the South East with, with what is happening, what actually led to the formation of Boko Haram. Nobody wants to set up Boko Haram or something similar to that in the South East. What actually happened is that some group, the IPOP for instance, and other, 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 kind of, uh, other uh, political uh, you know, groups, uh, actually want self-determination, want to have uh, a kind of a referendum, a vote to either decide whether they want a continuity of remaining in Nigeria or getting out of Nigeria because of the deep-seated marginalization and systemic oppressive policies and tendencies that have been in practice in the last six years. So even, even a death and dump, I don't want to use that word, maybe those who are physically challenged will feel that one is abusing them, you understand? So even if somebody who doesn't have the, the, the faculty of reasoning, we know that the reason why there are problems in the Southeast are multiple. First, we are of the belief that most of the killings that are taking place in the Southeast are not being done by IPOP. 
most of the killings that are taking place in the South East have been done by members of the deep state. I said it in, in this, uh, on, uh, this uh, studio, and many people didn't take me serious. Let me tell you, a lot of what people the in the motives? central don't, government, don't yes, a lot what of people in the central a, government. A, a, a yeah. emoji, yes. that, yeah. that borders on the realm of speculation. No, it's not. It's not because, because you, you, ha no you have you have figures, you have prominent figures in the federal government whose major responsibility is to defend Meyati Allah. They have always been saying you must give Flanny Hesman land to rear their cattle. No, so those again, people again, have that's not quite right to say that the federal government. Do you, do you want me to Google? To can you Google it? No, can you Google it? Show uh, is that bring him here. I will face him here. Bring him here. I will sit there. Not federal him. government. He's a spokesman yes. of the presidency. So let's. Mm -hmm. No, but he keeps saying right. the federal government. When you guys he want to quote him, he said the federal government the says federal that. The federal government is defending, it has an aim or a purpose of defending me. Attorney General has defended defended the right of the Fulanese to have land to rear their cattle. He said it's a human right. They still what have I, what the I, what opinion. I it's not the federal government. He is if the state. Attorney General speaks, he speaks for the federal government. He is the federal Attorney General of the Federation. He is the chief law officer of the country. In line with the constitution of Nigeria, really a constitution. So what you're so saying in effect is that is there that is a nexus between the violence and the killings yes. of even high-profile people in the southeast now yes. and the demands of Mieti Allah. But let me uh, yes. come to this uh, latest development: the launch of uh, this military operation, Exercise Golden Dawn. Will it achieve the desired objective, in your estimation, or well, are there well, concerns uh, of yes. human rights abuse that could arise from this? Yeah, well, hof uh, well hopefully, uh, the, chief, um, the chief of army staff, the new chief of army staff has just promised that he will adhere strictly to the human rights provisions. And we pray that he actually follows the, the, the condition he has given to his men to respect the rules of engagement. And of course, it is a legal, uh, a legal obligation on the part of the army. If you are in the army, it doesn't take you away from prosecutorial uh, uh, you know, responsibilities. If you commit offense, you must be charged because as a military person, you are going to face civilian laws and you're going to face military laws. Even under military laws, there are several provisions, international provisions, Geneva Conventions, that specifies how you treat uh, combatants, mm -hmm. how you treat civilians and the rest of them. So we hope that they're going to, uh, the military exercise in the Southeast and the whole of South, South Nigeria, not just Southeast, we succeed. We'll leave it there. Yes. Uh, Emmanuel Mubiko, mm. National Coordinator, Human Rights Association of Nigeria. Thank you for being in the, on the program.